Well, hello, this is Pastor Larry again coming to you with your Connect Group uh, podcast video. Uh, we still are not able to meet uh, on the campus uh, physically as we're used to doing. So this is going to be our method for the foreseeable future until this virus runs its course and, and God does away with it. Uh, and we get a release from the governor's uh, office and the health department to meet on campus once again. I know we're all looking forward to that. I know I am. Miss you guys a great deal. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and uh, look at prayer requests. Uh, I want to repeat some of them that we had earlier uh, and then go over some new ones that have been added. We want to continue to pray uh, for uh, the leaders of our nation, uh, our state, local leaders, that they will listen to God's direction uh, and not just be in a hurry to gain the approval of man. I want to pray for the students who are uh, out of school, obviously, for the rest of the year and having to deal with that and for the uh, parents that are teaching them uh, and for their teachers that now are having to uh, develop some online classes to help out parents with that thing. And I'm sure the teachers miss their students as well. Let's pray for first responders, for medical staff, uh, for grocery store workers, for truckers and others that are considered essential personnel that are having to work uh, through this uh, pandemic. I'm sure they have concerns about their loved ones at home uh, as well as their own health. So let's keep them in our prayers for their safety and their health. Pray for those who have compromised immune systems or the elderly who uh, are in a more uh, high risk category if they were to be exposed to the virus. So let's pray for them. Uh, continue to pray for Pam. Uh, and her chest pain so that she doesn't have to go to the hospital. Uh, Stacy uh, has asked us to pray for her uncle, Bob Pruitt. I want to continue to pray for him. Uh, for all of the uh, uh, COVID-19 issues that span the gamut of uh, health, uh, economy, the whole nine yards. So let's pray for about everybody and anybody worldwide that's affected by by the virus and the situation there. I want to pray for those that are sick with the virus, but also for those who are quarantined uh, and are trying to care for those who are sick. We want to pray for the church to be the church. Even though we can't physically meet together, we want to continue to understand that the church is not the physical building. The church is made up of uh, the believers in Jesus Christ and the church is alive and does not depend upon a physical campus. We can be the church wherever we are. Indeed, we are the church. So let me encourage you to continue to reach out to others, to let them see the light and the love of Jesus Christ in your light and your life. Uh, check on your brothers and sisters, check on your neighbors, check on the elderly, anybody that uh, you can think of that needs to know that somebody cares somebody's looking out for them. Uh, let's pray for the president and other leaders for wisdom and discernment. Uh, I want to ask you to pray for, continue to pray for my parents. They're both doing fine right now, uh, but as everybody else says, they're getting a little bit of uh, cabin fever, but they still need to stay in place and not go out any more than they have to. Pray for my sister and her family, for my brother, who is a um, an essential worker. He works for the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department and still has to go in. So pray for him. Uh, for my situation at work, we're working 10 hour days, seven days on and seven days off. Uh, so uh, if you will, I appreciate your prayers for my stamina there. Uh, and then for my wisdom and discernment and understanding as a pastor and for other pastors as well to know how we can best minister uh, to the flock and to the world during this situation. I uh, want to continue to Pray for Roscoe Watley. He is still in ICU at Baptist South. Uh, not a whole lot changed from the last time, but continue to uh, pray for him and for Ashley and for their family. The uh, house's uh, grandson is at Children's Hospital uh, with a, uh, I guess you could say, a systemic MRSA infection. So keep him and their family in your prayers. Uh, he seems to feel okay as far as his demeanor, but uh, he uh, has a serious infection there. So keep him uh, and his family in your prayers. Uh, pray for Kathy. Her legs are better, but uh, they still hurt her from time to time and swell up. 
Uh, we're trying to keep her away from anybody else and away from areas outside because with her compromised immune system, she does not need to uh, contact the virus. For my daughter, Diane, and son-in-law, Rob, they are doing okay, uh, but they are a long way from home and Fort Worth and everything out there is pretty much as it is here, shut down. Uh, pray for Barbara Gillespie. She's battling an upper respiratory infection. Uh, let's see what else. And then uh, Wayne Carty, uh, Mickey asked me to put him on the prayer list. He's on the uh, Mickey's uh, life groups uh, prayer list already. We continue to pray for Wayne and his family. He's in rehab right now with a seriously injured neck. I'm sure there are other prayer requests. So let me encourage you to email those to me or text them to me or send me a message on Facebook and I will add them to the church's list uh, along with everyone else here. So it's a privilege to be able to pray for these uh, and others to go to the Lord in prayer. And so if you will join me now as we pray. Father, <clears throat> we do uh, delight in the privilege that you give us to come to you in prayer. You tell us in your word that when we don't know what to say or how best to pray, that your spirit makes intercession with groanings we can't even understand. So, Father, we just come before you and fall down before you, praying that, uh, Lord, you would work in the life situations that we've mentioned and, and so many others. We, we know that you know that we are in perilous and desperate times. Uh, the world is at a standstill. We know that did not take you by surprise, but we pray, Father, that you would uh, work in this situation according to your will, that you'd be honored and glorified. We pray, Father, that you would banish this plague uh, and that you would restore health and, and or preserve life again according to your love and your mercy and your power. We pray for first responders, for nurses, doctors, medical personnel that are on the front lines, that you would give them stamina, uh, courage, and boldness, that, Father, you would keep them safe and protect them from the virus as they seek to minister to so many people who are who are sick. We pray for the leaders at all levels of government, from the president on down to the local communities, that you would give them wisdom and discernment and understanding. They would be more concerned about your approval than their position in a political poll. Father, we pray for those that are having to continue to work, those that are considered essential workers, that you would keep them and their families safe and that you would give them the stamina to be able to uh, continue on through this uh, protracted plague. Or this is an historic event. We've not seen anything like it in our lives and our minds go back to, to plagues in scripture, the plagues in Egypt and other uh, plagues that were recorded in scripture. And Father, we know in each case, and in this case today, you are still in control. So we pray, Father, that you will work in us and through us and around us according to your will, that, Father, we would be still and know that you're God, that we would take uh, opportunity as, as we so many of us are at home and we have seemingly extra time. Father, may we use that time wisely to worship you and to dig into your word and to spend time praying and touching others electronically, even with your love and with your truth. Father, help us to, as your church, to be about doing your work. Give us discernment. Help us to know how best to do that. Father, we pray in all these things that you would guide and direct us and as always, we ask as we open your word tonight, we pray that you'll open our hearts and our minds to your truth and guide us by your spirit. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so thank you for joining me tonight uh, in prayer and also in worship. We're going to continue looking at the book of Isaiah as we have been doing for actually a couple of months or more now. Uh, and we're going to be in chapter 44 and through 46 of Isaiah. So if you have already uh, pulled up the graphics from my Facebook page or the uh, uh, church's Facebook page or the church website, then I hope you will join me as we look at Isaiah 44 through 46. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity to uh, get away from the news. Uh, now, yes, you need to keep a check on the news, but don't spend too much time because you can become... Uh, anxious, definitely, by uh, being staying connected to the news all day. So let me encourage you to, to break off for a little bit and to open God's word and let's study it together and let his spirit speak to us. 
Isaiah chapter 44. Uh, Yet hear now, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you and formed you from the womb, who will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. We see as we look through uh, through uh, the 44th chapter here of Isaiah that that God says in these in these uh, first eight verses uh, that we're reminded that He blesses. He blessed Israel here, uh, and He blesses us today as well. I challenge you during this time to consider how much He has blessed you. It's 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 easy to lose sight and lose track in the midst of the anxiety and the and the fear that's all around us it's easy to lose track of the fact that god is still in the blessing business now does he know what's going on absolutely he does but but take just a moment in the midst of this difficulty in the midst of this darkness and doubt and despair even that we see in the world to recognize the blessings that god has given to us Uh, as i said i think last week I looked at some some pictures and some and some articles from the Spanish flu pandemic back in the in the uh, 1918 uh, time frame, and 50 million people died. Now, any life lost is 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 terrible, but when we consider that compared to this, even in the midst of this difficulty, you see that God has still blessed us. Uh, you have blessings I hope that you're aware of uh, in your own life, in your family's life, at your at your home. Even though we are, a lot of us are quarantined at home, you still have food. You still have things that you can get. You still have electronic media to reach out and to connect with other people. So there are a lot of things as you start enumerating your blessings, there are a lot of things that we can worship and praise and bless God for. And I hope we take stock of that and bless God even in the midst of of these troubling times. Remember that even during the Exodus, the 40 years that the Israelites wandered in the desert, uh, God still never left them. Even though they were undergoing judgment from God, he still did not abandon them. And God does not abandon you or I today. He knows where his children are. He knows what we're going through. He knows what's happening. So, So don't think for a moment that he has abandoned or left you. He is still in charge. He is still just a prayer away. He is closer than your next breath, and he is still in the blessing business. As we look through uh, chapter 44 there, we also see that God reminds us that there is no other God besides him. Satan will try to uh, bring up, and has uh, throughout history, tried to bring up various counterfeits to delude people, uh, and and humans as well have tried multiple gods throughout history. We even see, uh, as we look at the Exodus, the Israelites, after they crossed the Red Sea and were waiting uh, in the wilderness area, they even took opportunity while Moses was gone to have Aaron fashion a golden calf, which was one of the idols that had been worshiped in Egypt. So throughout history, we see man, uh, fashioning various idols that they've tried to put in the place of God. Now, today you may not have or you may not see a golden calf or uh, an asterisk pole or or anything like that. But nonetheless, humanity still continues to raise up and build up idols. Now, in our day and time, maybe we consider ourselves more sophisticated. We don't worship a little totem pole, but Uh, mankind still sets up idols, and quite often uh, the idol that is set up is self, self self-worship, pride, uh, pleasure, prestige, those kind of things. We set those up, and they are just as much an idol as a golden calf. And the result, every time, without fail, in setting up an idol is ultimately death. Idols throughout history have uh, rendered man powerless, uh, and the end result of worshiping idols is death. 
any idol erected by men or by a man is a foolish action. Uh, remember, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, Psalm 14, 1. And we see, we see unfortunately, that today as well, that a large uh, percentage of the human population continues to erect idols, that, that man continues to work and to worship the work of his hands, whether it's a golden calf, an asterisk, a bale, a totem pole, or some other uh, really, uh, it may not be a physical, tangible idol. It may be more sophisticated and uh, more abstract, but still it is an idol nonetheless. And man continues to worship the works of his hands. And in every case, that leads to destruction, to darkness, and to death. It has always, and it will continue to do so until man changes or until Jesus Christ returns, whichever comes first. Verses 21 through 28, we are reminded that God continues to work his plan. He continues to work his plan. Uh, verse 21 says, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servants. Uh, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest, and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, and he who formed you from the womb, I am the Lord, who makes all things, who stretches out the heavens all alone who spreads abroad the earth by myself, who frustrates the signs of the babblers and drives diviners mad, who turns wise men backward and makes their knowledge foolishness, who confirms the word of his servant and performs the counsel of his messengers. Uh, so we see here that, that God continues to work his plan, even though man, uh, the way of man, the way of the world, Satan ultimately tries to thwart God's plans they will not be thwarted. God will accomplish what his word has said, what he has set out to do from the beginning. We see that even the pagan king Cyrus, the Persian uh, pagan king Cyrus is used by God. Even though Cyrus doesn't know God personally, even though Cyrus was not a worshiper of God, even though uh, Persia was a pagan nation, God raised up uh, King Cyrus, he raised up the Persian Empire and he used them just as he did uh, Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian Empire uh, prior to that and the Assyrian Empire prior to that uh, and then Egypt uh, before that. So God continues to use whoever he wills, whenever he wills, to accomplish his plan. All creation belongs to God, including a coronavirus. Everything belongs to God and nothing, I will remind you, nothing is beyond his ability to do. He could wipe the virus out just like that. We could wake up tomorrow and see no more of the virus and, and praise God that he has that ability. Now, he may not do it. I don't know, but he has that ability. Everything in his creation is subject to his command. All seen and unseen things do not do not doubt that for a moment. Now, Isaiah 45, verse 1 says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held, to subdue nations before him and loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors so that the gates will not be shut. So here we see God is setting up this pagan king, this Persian king, to accomplish his plan to ultimately start bringing back the Israelites uh, to Jerusalem. Uh, and God can set up any ruler of any nation on this earth to do what he uh, wants to have done. Don't forget that. Again, verses 1 through 13 here of chapter 45 reminds us that God is in control everywhere. Uh, I'm just going to read a few verses here for you. Uh, Verse five, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. I will gird you, though you have not known me. And it's speaking of uh, Cyrus now, that they may know from the rising of the sun to its setting that there is none besides me. 
I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Rain down, you heavens, from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open. Let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who strives with his maker. Lest let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, What are you making? Or shall your handiwork say, He has no hands? Woe to him who says to his father, Who are you begetting? Or to the woman, What have you brought forth? Just or Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my works and concerning the work of my hands you command me. I have made the earth and created man on it. I and my hands have stretched out the heavens, and all their host I have commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and let my exiles go free. Uh, not for price nor reward, says the Lord of hosts. So God is in control. He was in control of the Persian Empire. He was control in control of the Babylonian Empire before that, the Assyrian Empire prior to that, the Egyptian Empire before that. And the list goes on and on and goes forth today as well to modern times. No nation ever that has ever existed that exists today or that will ever exist, exists without the approval, at least, or the uh, tolerance of God. God is in control. We answer to him, not the reverse. God does not does not answer to us. We all, no matter whether we recognize him as God or not, we all, all of creation, answers to God. He is Lord of all, has been, is today, and will forever be. Verses 14 and following remind us that Jesus Christ is our only Savior. There is salvation under no other name. Look at verses 22 through 23 there. Look at me and be saved all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that to me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall take an oath. So we know already that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So it is best, and I encourage everyone under the sound of my voice to make sure they do that now. Don't wait for the end. Do it now. Understand that, that that all of Scripture from the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation is either pointing to Jesus or is talking about Jesus or is highlighted what Jesus uh, has done and will do. The totality of Scripture is focusing on one event, the incarnation, the uh, God with us, Jesus Christ, man uh, and God, God in the flesh, the gospel, the good news is that God sent his son to redeem lost and fallen man back to himself, that by the blood of Jesus Christ, we might all be saved. And that is the only, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. There is uh, salvation in no other name save the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you might say, well, pastor, that's exclusive and I'd say yes it is uh, that's the way God designed it why would he sacrifice his only begotten son for you if there was some other back door or some other way into heaven there is not Jesus Christ is the only way he's the only way ever has been and the only way that ever will be now Isaiah chapter 46 verse 5 says to whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me that we should be alike? So we're reminded again that God is God and God alone, that there is no other like him. Uh, chapter 46 starts talking about idols, idols bowing down uh, to God, uh, that they are not alive, not really, that God is God alone. Uh We've got to make a choice, and the sooner we make it, the better. We've got to choose, and there really are only there's only two choices. You choose between the living God or a dead idol. And you might say, well, I don't worship an idol. 
Well, I submit to you that if you do not worship the living Lord, then the only other choice is an idol of some kind. Now, maybe it's self. Maybe it's Satan. Maybe it's pride, pleasure, prestige. I don't know. You can call it any name you want to. But if you do not worship Jesus Christ, the living Lord, then the only other option is a dead idol. You've got to choose the way of life or the way of death. Throughout Scripture, we say God has set a choice before humanity. Choose life or choose death. And you might say, who in the world would choose death? But time and time again, we see that man chooses death, and they do that by not choosing Christ. There is only one way. Jesus, I already said, Jesus made the claim, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He says in John 10, 10, that he's come to give us life and life more abundantly. John 3, 16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There are only two choices, the way of life or the way of death. Jesus Christ is the way of life. Any other path is the way of death. So then that brings up this last choice. You, tr you choose either the narrow path, the winding path that Jesus Christ is leading you on, or else you choose the broad way, the highway. And scripture says many there are that go therein. Now, you may look at, at, a, at a poll somewhere that says, well, a large percentage of the, of the world does not believe in Jesus Christ. Well, we already know that's the case. Uh, and Jesus said uh, in, in the Gospels that a large number, a broad way, a highway that leads to destruction and many there are that are going therein. The narrow path, the winding path leads to life eternal and few there are that find it. And my friend, the only way we are going to find it is if we are following Jesus Christ. He is the light. He is the life. He is the way. His word is a light and a lamp to our feet and our path. We cannot get there following the philosophy and the leadings of man. We cannot get there following our own feelings, letting our conscience be our guide. The only way we get there is with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We live in dark, we live in troubled, we live in desperate times. God tells us that in his word. He's told us that ages before it come to pass. This coronavirus pandemic is nothing new. God knew it was coming. And he tells us in his word, to always be ready. Well, how, how can you be ready? The only way you can be ready is to have a personal, real, dynamic, living relationship with Jesus Christ. And then no matter what happens physically on this world, then and only then are we able to say, it is well with my soul. It will be okay. Verses 9 through 10 say, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning. You see, before God ever created anything, he knew what the end was going to look like. His word tells us that before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. Now, what does that mean? That means before God ever created anything, he knew that it was going to take the life of his son to redeem us. And he was willing to pay that cost. What about you? Are you in fear? Are you in doubt? Are you in distress and dismay? Or can you really say, it is well with my soul because Jesus Christ is really and truly my Savior and my Lord. I pray that you will, if you've not already done so, I pray tonight that you will ask him to forgive you of your sins to come into your heart and your life and be your Savior and be your Lord. 
that no matter a coronavirus, no matter any other pestilence or any other plague or any other problem on this earth, that you will trust him to deliver you, your soul from hell and your and your and your very person to life everlasting. Father, I pray for those that understand my voice this evening, Lord, that you will work in their hearts and life, that Father, they will know you personally as their Savior and their Lord, and that no matter the darkness, no matter the doubt, no matter the difficulty we find ourselves in, that each one will trust you above all else to be their Savior and their Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this evening. Don't forget to check uh, my Facebook page or the church's Facebook page or the church website to get the uh, graphics that go along with the Bible study here. Uh, and then also be looking forward to our drive-in Easter service on Easter Sunday morning at 11 o'clock on our campus at 2315 uh, US 231 North Deetsville. Uh, now next Sunday, Palm Sunday, we'll continue to do the online worship and hope you will join us for that. Uh, on our church website, my Facebook page, or the church Facebook page as well. Thank you again for joining me tonight. God bless you.